So I haven't uh, spoken much about my PTA experience yet. So uh, seven years ago, while I was advocating for reading, I got involved in PTA. So I was the PTA president at first at Oak Valley, and then I uh, was on the board at the North. I became the PTA president over there. And then um, during the pandemic, I was the um, PTA president for the school district. Really? Uh, yeah, that's Polymer Council. So PTA is organized in levels. There is the unit level at the school, and then there is um, um, like a school district level, and then there is the county level, and then there is the state level and the national level. So you were president at the, at the district at, level? At the school district level. Wow, yes. that's impressive. And then the whole thing with the tragic um, events with George Floyd happened in, oh, yeah. in the summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, I, as a PTA president, I felt like we need to do something for PTA. PTA has always been an advocate for diversity and inclusion. So um, I was contacted by a community member and we decided to start a committee, so a PTA committee. <clears throat> and we call it Justice, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. So th that becomes Jedi. So that was kind of on purpose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we have had very interesting conversations. I learned so much. So already with my kids as a as a white person raising biracial African American kids, you you get a perspective that I hadn't had before in my life. So as white we don't understand how much racism there is in society, sadly. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's very easy as a white person to just go through life and not know anything about what your neighbors are going through. And we, and, and at the same time, I also realized that this is a very difficult subject to talk about, especially in this country. Um, it's not like Europe doesn't have racism, but we don't have uh, the same history as the US. So um, this committee now has 250 Facebook members. Oh, uh, nice. But gotten really big. Um, and some of the schools started their own committees. And, and, and I've learned so much from, we also have a book club where we, we read books to get, the, the goal is for us to learn more and to be able to speak about this in a better way. And the goal then obviously is to make the schools more, um, to make sure that all kids can go to school feeling safe and valued. Mm -hmm. um, so, because what the wonderful women um, in Black and PUSD, um, they made, they did clear to everyone is that uh, there is a lot of racism in our school district and we need to do something about that. So. Well, do you think there's progress being made on this front? So from my family, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, things that were kind of brushed to the side before are taken seriously. And I feel like teachers and staff are much more focused. They understand more about what it's like to be maybe the only African-American kid in the class and what that, what that feels like. Mm -hmm. I feel like they have much more understanding that it's very, uh, it can be very difficult. Yeah, oh, I, I totally understand that. So, um, yeah, I know that this is just a really hot issue. And, and you know, really, CRT, isn't that yeah. like a college-level course? Yeah, so that's uh, how this, has it, CRT as critical race theory has its roots in the civil rights movements in the 1960s. And it was just a college class for law students. Is it, I think Harvard developed it. And, mm. and then during the pandemic and with George Floyd, it was taken up by some media sources and they started using it as a bad word. And what really it is, is to, for these law students, because so many laws have not been, have been racist, basically. They have not treated everyone the same. Um, and they were started, they started to look at that and improve the laws and also the attitudes because the problem in many of these things is that it's, we are not aware how we think. And th the whole thing was to, to bring that up to the surface so that we can face it. Mm -hmm. And then sadly that, 
that law school class was then used as a political, in the political debate. And we, we can say that schools, we, schools definitely don't teach CRT as a law school class, but what the like ethnic studies and ethnic literature classes, they do have the aspect of, of helping kids find their identity. And if that identity is not white, then that definitely is, uh, they are looking at what it's like to be to to they, they they call it both mirrors and lenses. So you 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 should be able to read books about yourself, uh, someone that looks like you. From from my kids, I remember all of them were really really happy when they they had a, in second grade uh, they got to read about Martin Luther King because mm-hmm. that was typically the first black person that they read about. They had a book, and and that this idea that it shouldn't just be a two or three people. There should be lots of authors. There are more than Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King in right. the world. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And uh, I was a, I'm a big supporter of ethnic lit and ethnic studies. And my oldest son had ethnic lit last year, and he said it was one of the best or maybe the best class he had. Uh, he learned so much and, and learned about feeling more confident in his identity. And they talk, it's not just about the racial identity. They talk about, you can have many different identities. He, it was so interesting to watch his presentation about um, his identity in, in um, ethnic lit, because I was really proud that he also mentioned that he's Swedish, because mm-hmm. I didn't even know uh, my kids have a mixed, they like going to Sweden and they speak Swedish, but it's not a big part of their identity, I thought, but apparently it was for him, which was great. Yeah. Right, because there's something special yeah. about yeah. him. Yeah, he is a, cit- a Swedish citizen as well as American. So uh, that's my thoughts. I think that we need to um, learn as much as possible about each other. Um, and so we can have more respect and understanding for people who are different, who had a different experience mm-hmm. in life. And that the schools have, play an important role because they need to prepare kids for the future. And like my husband works for Amazon, he's a senior manager, and he has people, he works with people from all over the world. And you need to be prepared for that. You need to prepare kids in school that their job might be like you don't may not have a single American co- colleague. Um, and you have people from all over the world, and you need to be able to understand them and not think that everyone is like you. And that's basically mm-hmm. what I, why I think that the equity and diversity pro, uh, program is important. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> all right, it's very interesting. 